Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about touching people. That's what we're talking about. So if you're in business, I got some awesome ideas for you. It's going to be a fun one. We got Steve the man with us. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? I'm glad that you're here. If it's your first time, have a look around. Uh, hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. But we have like 200 episodes to catch up on. Uh, if you do watch Squeegee Life, I'm going to hit 200 episodes before they do. So high five to me and not them. Hashtag number one podcast. Uh, if you are one of the cool kids and you're certified with your sticker, that means you watch every episode, you listen, you thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube, and more importantly, you buy your supplies from me. Shameless plug, but my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Call me, text me, tell me everything's in your cart. Tell me I can go and buy brand name mac and cheese with the money I make from your uh, commission of your sale. But either way, put your orders in through me. That is how I make my cheddar. Uh, also, if you are one of the epic cool kids, meaning you do all that, you buy your supplies through me, and more importantly, you have the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Look at this, Sorbo on the cover. By the way, met him at IWCA again. Super cool dude. But thank you. Uh, it is because of you that I am a uh, entertainment mogul when it comes to magazines and podcasts and everything else. If you haven't got your subscription, go to awcmag.com. Get your subscription. But today, we are actually talking all about five ways to touch people. And before you go ahead and uh, write me your angry email, this is more touches like virtual touches. Like, like you know, print and like, you know, here's my branding touches. Not like the whole, I'm going to be uh, in jail for 30 days touching. But today, we're actually having Steve the man uh, with us in his crispy WCR shirt. What's up, Steve? Super crispy. Whip so it crispy. Out. Just, I must say, watching you work is magnificent. You are- <laughs> I should be the Shamwell guy. I could just, I could sell it all. But <laughs> after after 200 of these episodes, like every single week for 200 straight weeks, it uh, it starts to be just kind of second nature, I think. Yeah. No, for sure. Absolutely. You got it down. Your um, tats, your tats are blinging too, man. There's like, your your ink is like really coming through really good on my end, so... Yeah, it's, um, I, I take good care of them. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm constantly going back to, I'm lubricating, you know, making sure things are just in pristine condition, keep them out of the sun so they're nice and vibrant. I just realized that touching and lubricating thing in the same <laughs> sentences. Like, hey, uh, if you're into lubricating, who am I to tell you any different? So that's, that's good. <laughs> But uh, if, if anybody doesn't know you, just real quick, tell us who you are. I mean, everybody should know you, but who are you? What do you do? Where are you from? I'm from North Jersey. I'm actually near uh, the window, windowcleaner.com facility. Um, I got my start in the printing industry back in 2005. Uh, I've been doing printing and marketing ever since then. I love it. Uh, it's what I know. It's what I, it's what I wake up every day and do. So um, yeah, that's how I started working for a print company back in 2005. I became the production manager there. And then, um, like many people that we talked to, I, I always knew I would be an entrepreneur. I always knew that I was going to have my own business. I knew it was only temporary. Uh, so I learned the industry and then started my own thing and, you know, been doing this ever since. Nice. Now, uh, if anybody is seeing the screen, uh, you have a cat condo in the background should we be treating you different because you're not a dog person i mean all right i closed the door because i do have two cats i also have a girlfriend uh, she's one of the reasons why i have two cats i am a dog person i am 100 a dog person we are in a a um a, we're segueing over into a new home and we are not purchasing a puppy until we are in that home mm. uh, currently in a really nice apartment but it's not dog friendly so right now it's just the cats and people bust on me all the time about the cats i just want to say this is how you explained it you said i do have two cats i have a girlfriend you said it like that so it's like you knew that uh being a cat person people would kind of question <laughs> by the way 
if you're watching or listening, uh, comment down below on YouTube if you're a cat person or a dog person. If you're a cat person, you probably also shower at night, you freak of nature, you. Um, but uh, let us <laughs> I'm shower at night because I shower at night, but I've become more of a morning person. Um, and now I am, you know, showering more in the morning because it just fits the schedule. But it's... well, thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, we're going to end this a little short. He showers at night and has cats. I just no, but <laughs> but uh, you've been a lot of places. Uh, we've known you for a really, really long time. So um, it, like what people don't know is like if anybody has to talk to you like for questions just on anything uh you're super super helpful you're on the forums and everything else so um anyway it's good to know you people meet you in real life and then they're like oh you're steve as opposed to like knowing the name more than the face so yeah for sure and i love this industry i, I love that i like was brought into this industry um it's just a bunch of cool people like it, in my previous people I used to deal with in, in my original business, it just wasn't as exciting. And like, it, people weren't as passionate as they are in the window cleaning and pressure washing industry. Like, I, I'm happy that I was brought in and, and I come to these events with you guys and all that. It's pretty cool. Nice. Well, someday we'll have events again and they'll go back to semi-normal. I, I feel like you guys mesh more with my personality. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it was... Like I hated having to put on that like sales and, and, you know, really just be like a button down, just going into these meetings with like, you know, CEOs. <laughs> I hated that. I hated yeah. it. And now like, this is, this is my home. This, this, these are the kind of businesses I like working with and like, you know, it would just be real, like, which is better for me. You yeah. Know? More down to earth. Blue collar is just a little bit, for me, easier to connect with than the, the whole white collar fancy <laughs> yeah. board meeting again. I see. Yeah. I don't have to cover my tattoos when I, you know I'm talking to people because like some old you know CEO is gonna be like, oh, yeah, tattoos. You're clearly a terrible person. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's le not like you have face tattoos. That that'd be a little bit more. You'd be questionable in the printing business, but completely a okay if you were a high rise window cleaner. Just yeah, saying. No. Just saying. Well, today I wanted to kind of chat, chat a little bit about um, having uh, some touches. And I thought, who better to talk to than you? Because you know print forward and backward. You know what people are using and kind of what works best. And I wanted to some bounce some kind of ideas off of you and uh, just kind of see what you think. But I got five different ways of print advertising, just ways to get your brand in front of somebody that's not digital. Because the big thing is, as somebody who, of course has a printed magazine. Um, I totally like prints. I think getting it in people's hand is so much better than digital. You have to be everywhere and it has to kind of be the same across all platforms. So don't ever think that, you know, with no matter what I'm talking about that uh, I'm saying don't have digital media. I'm just saying that you have to have all aspects. It's like McDonald's. They're on every type of virtual and digital platform, but they're also on billboards and magazines and radio. They're in like tangible things also. And it's just to kind of be across all platforms, really. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, first off, let's talk a little bit about business cards. I don't want to talk a lot about business cards because I think sometimes people, it's usually the first thing they do for their business. And they spend too much time on it, but I have seen some super dope ones. Peter Artusa, uh, All County Window Cleaning, has some super super dope ones. I know you've done some ridiculous ones. I want to say, yeah, I want to say that, that card has got to be like a buck a piece. Like I, when it's all said and done, it's got to be pretty stinking expensive. But like, what do guys? What what are we looking for in a business card? Like, what makes a business card actually stand out? Well. Right now, it's all about the stock. It's all, you know, these super thick stock, triple yeah. layer stocks, and suede finish is huge right now. Um, you're looking for a card, especially in the beautification industry, you know, window cleaners, pressure washers. You're looking for a card that shows that you care about your brand sort of situation. Yeah. It, I, I don't personally like when I see, you know, a brand, a window cleaner, let's just say, who's got a business card um, and they're trying to sell their services. They're trying to get people to spend, uh, call it $500 to clean all their windows and all that. 
Meanwhile, they're handing out a business card that is just was made at like awful. Office Depot, crappy. It's yeah, printed on toilet paper. It's got perforated edges. Like you're trying to convince people to care about their image, and you know, if you do commercial work, you're trying to convince people, you know, care about their business and their business image. But meanwhile, you can't be bothered to care about your image enough to have a decent business card. It doesn't have to be you know, a Peter Artusa card or like a triple C window cleaning. Chris Cartwright has an, an amazing card. It doesn't have to be that. But yeah. it's got to be good enough that like, you know, you're, you're legit. You're, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you have a little money to spend on your own brand. So, you know, yeah. trust it a little bit more. I, my big idea on business cards is it's a feel thing. Every single person you've ever handed a crappy business card to, they're like, oh, thanks. And they put it in their wallet. They didn't look at it when they said, oh, thanks. You hand somebody a card that they like, like you said, that fat satin finish where it's almost like, almost like rubberized feel and it's super thick and people get it and it's like textured. They're like, whoa, this a, and they'll look at it instantly. So it's like that kind of weird connection thing where, yeah, anybody can save your number. It's a digital world. Everybody's phone numbers are here in your phone, but giving them something where you can leave it, it's got to be something that'll at least be looked at, not just thrown away. You... You hit the nail on the head, and there's a reason why Peter Artusa's business card is sitting in my drawer because it's so sexy that I won't throw it away. Like yeah. I'm gonna call Peter. I, don't, I have no use for Peter's services right now. Um, he's a little too far too. But like, it's just such a nice card. When I first touch it, I'm like, oh my god, like this is this is amazing. Yeah. And there's um, I recommend you find this guy on on YouTube. If you type in like uh. I don't even know what you would type in business card jerk. Um, I'd have to get back to you with keywords, but there's this guy came out a long time ago. He made a video about his $4 business card and he's like an event planner. And this guy is the most obnoxious guy in the world, but he, he, he makes a video about his business card and why it's so amazing. I've seen that. Really true. It, it, it like it, unfolds. It's like it unfolds. It's die cut. It's got all these foils and stuff like that. But the point is nobody will ever throw that card. Like yeah. I would never throw that card away. Yeah. I have no use for the guy. It's and, and like it's like that in the promo world. I, I come from like the promotional items world where you know we would convince people all the time, don't spend your money on this crappy product that people am I allowed to say crappy? You are, yeah, that's that's cleared. We checked uh, it. This crappy product that people are just gonna throw away, it's a colossal waste of your money. Yeah. If you're gonna do a tumbler, you gotta do a tumbler that's gonna sit at the front of the cabinet because they're always using it because it's their best tumbler. Then it's going to be an effective, you know, use of putting your logo on something. So I advocate, you don't have to spend a crazy amount of money. I'm pretty sure Peter Artus is probably, like you said, what'd you say you think he spent? I'd say a dollar a piece. That's like where my brain would probably go. Knowing uh, all the features on Peter's card, I can say that it's probably in the 80 cent range, 80 cent a piece. A piece. Yeah, that's crazy. Like we talk about this too. Uh, plastic gift cards for me have been like my business card. I always say, Hey, I don't have a card on me. What I have is this gift card. Take that all my number and email and, and, and website is all. And then when they get this plastic gift card, they keep it no matter what. Like if yeah. you look in your wallet or purse right now, you're going to have gift cards that have like 38 cents. Cause you just never threw it away. It's got a receipt wrapped around. I mean, the, a gift card people always keep. There's always intended value. So it's that same concept. Get something quality in people's hands. Absolutely. Uh, you. That is a great way to market a business. Uh, gift cards. I was actually reading yesterday about gift cards and how much, uh, ha how they benefit the, the business owner. Like, you know, we're talking gift cards like Amazon and, and yeah. stuff like that, where they're actually, people are purchasing these gift cards and then giving them away. In seven, I think the number was like 70% are redeemed, but that other 30%, those businesses just made like clean money and mm -hmm. forget that they haven't. But gift cards, it doesn't have to have a magnetic strip on it. Just giving someone something that's like, you know, $25 off your, your first service or whatever it is, they're thicker. Uh, we usually would do them in a credit card uh, size, which is a little different than a business card. And like you said, people don't get rid of it. It's nice, it's plastic. It, it's a it's a, a great alternative to like the standard business card. Yeah. Yeah. Gift cards are awesome, by the way. If you haven't used gift cards, I've done a thousand billion episodes on gift cards. Uh, they don't you people I put them for $25. 
a piece and no one's window cleaning is less than that. So you don't actually need a magnetic strip. When somebody uses it, they redeem it against a whole window cleaning. It's just basically a discount and they're reusable, man. Clean them off, put them back out there. It's uh, pretty stinking awesome. But uh, another way to kind of get your brand out there and get touches and get stuff in people's hands is door hangers. Uh, which I do a ton of the five up, five downs, where you're basically handing them out two doors down each way, or I should say one each way and three across the street. If it's on somebody's house, they're going to get it off their house, right? It's there. They're going to go look at it. It's not mixed in with the mail. They're grabbing it separate. It's a really, really good, easy, and fast way to kind of get your brand out there and tell somebody a little bit about yourself. But for me, I'm cool with buying like the cheapest stock. I mean, it's got to be thicker stock, but it doesn't have to be like glossy UV. It doesn't have to be super fancy because it's just going to be sitting there for a few minutes. I don't know what you see is kind of coming across, but uh, what are your thoughts on door hangers? I love them. I think they're tried and true. Um, it, it's, it's really easy. Like if, if you're working on, on a house, you're beautifying somebody's house. Uh, it's fancy long. beautifying, by the way. That's a fancy word. That's a real word. That's nice. You're, That's you're, nice. You're making beautiful somebody's house or someone's business. It doesn't really work for business, but and I know you. Do, you know, you've told me you do the five rounds, which is great, and you've been doing them for a long time. How easy is it to just like hop next door and across the street? What does it take yeah. minutes to hit all five people? Yep. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're sort of like, especially if you do something like a part in the glare. Uh, so I do. That's my, yeah. So what you're doing is like, all right, Margie across the street, her house looks awesome. Uh, got pressure washed, got, you know, the windows clean. And then, you know, her, this woman who gets it, like her husband, Jerry, isn't doing nothing to keep their house looking nice. And it looks horrible. Yeah. So, like you're, you're sort of mentally like giving them a little push. Like you should probably get our services also, because you know what? The other people on your block are giving our services. Yeah. Um, it's a it's, Go ahead. it's the keeping up with the Joneses. That's why like you should have a super nice van wrap or something so that everybody who drives by goes, Oh, uh, yeah. the Joneses there, they're, they're uh, getting their windows clean. That's a professional. Like you're always trying to compete. You know, if like somebody's mowing their lawn, three other people will start mowing their lawn. Like it's just keeping up with the Joneses is, is the same thing. And that's why I like pardon your glare. It just basically says like pardon your glare. We just cleaned your neighbor's house. You know, if you need your house done too, it's one of those. And you're thinking like, man, who got their house done? I bet you it was like you said, Margie, I bet you it was Margie over there. They're always do And all of a sudden it's like this kind of uh, big competition. I've had people call me and like, Hey, I got this. I was just wondering who around here got their uh, windows clean. And it's because they're going to ask them like, Hey, how'd you like these guys? And always, Oh yeah, it's the Joneses over there at uh one, two, three fake street or whatever, you know, I'll let them know because it's not really, they're going to see where their truck was anyway and where we're going in and out of. So. Yeah. It, it's it, especially if it's like someone right across the street, like that's a built in testimonial right there. You know, you do a good job. And, and Margie says to, you know, Janice, like, Oh my God, they're amazing. Like the, Josh and his crew came like they're not they're not that expensive. They do a good job. I have them do it, you know, two, three times a year. Like the part in the glare in the five around concept works beautifully. Yeah. Do I think still work if you're like if you if you have more time than money and you're like just starting a business ordering door hangers and spending a few hours here and there just, you know, canvassing an area that you really want to get business from. Um, you know, that works too, but yeah. definitely a five round is like, it, it's a whole different. I, uh, our way that we structure how we do things is our operate. It's always two people on a route or a residential, uh, the operations officer is the one that finishes everything up. The tech will clean all the stuff around the house, make sure that all the stuff is back on the truck while the operations officer or crew chief is talking to the homeowner. Then the tech is the one who goes back after everything's on the truck. They grab their door hangers and then do the five up. That's enough time for the other guy to be back to the truck and then leave together. So it takes literally no time. Otherwise, he'd just be sitting in the truck anyway. So yeah, Man, sitting yeah. there stuck on the phone doing nothing, like you exactly. know, waiting because everyone's on the phone all the time. Exactly. You know, get some more fresh air and go get some more business easily. Yeah. yeah. My favorite, favorite, favorite way. Let me favorite way for commercial 
is a consumer or a commercial packet. That is, I'm going to explain to you, if you haven't heard it, you're living under a rock and you don't listen to my podcast because I talk about it all the time. But a commercial packet for me is a folder, custom printed folder. It's got an inserted business card. It's got all of the uh, services that we offer, plus their bid, plus our insurance information is all in there. Every single thing down to a sheet that just has like, our accreditations, like our, these are the, we're part of these associations, IWCA, you know, all those things. I'm putting all those on there. It's basically this super fancy colored packet that you're spending decent money on. And when you go and do these big bids, I'm giving it to the property manager. I'm giving it to whoever I'm building bidding on this property. And it's a lot better to see a $10,000 bid come across than the guy who you're going up against, who's got a half sheet of paper that's been you know, he wrote the quote on a napkin, you know, like you're always going to be there and there's your, your packet is always going to be on their desk. It's not going to be in a manila folder somewhere because it's not just a sheet of paper. It's a whole thing, you know, talk to me about that. What do you see is that whole five to $10 range? Is that, is that smart to spend that much on a commercial packet? Um, you know, it, I'm going to go back to that business card thing for one second, talk, yeah. talking about the 80 cent business card. You know, you don't necessarily give out that, eight, you don't go to a networking event and give out that 80 cent business card, and, you know, give out a thousand of them and there's $800 in business yeah. cards out there. You don't do that. You reserve those for the opportunities that you need to hand over an 80 cent business card. And then maybe you have, you know, your, your standard good, but standard business cards for everything else. Those commercial packets, like if you're if you're trying to lay, if you're communicating with a property manager or the owner of a building, uh, you know, you need to represent yourself as an established business that can be trusted with this task. And there's no better way than, like you said, putting together a packet. Uh, whether it be a folder um, like you do, uh, I'd be interested to see yours, by the way. Yeah. And, or like we, I've seen a lot of companies are doing like these little thin boxes where you can put all the literature and stuff in there. Um, that is, look, if you can't afford, you know, five, six, seven, even up to $10 on an opportunity that's going to bring in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars potentially into your business, like, you're kind of doing it wrong. Um, Guys are paying more than that for uh, um, service magic leads. They're paying $25 yeah. for just a lead. Like, why if, not? If, if I was brought into a meeting, uh, you know, a, a for a, let's just say a printing meeting, and I'm brought in and I know that it's an elephant account. This, this could put, you know, insane profits into the company. I'm going to go out of my way to spend money on that opportunity. So, you know, I would absolutely have a packet prepared. I'd probably have like, you know, custom printed samples and things of that nature. Just really go above and beyond because you want to land that. That's your first, that is your first impression right there. You yeah. know, like you got the guy who comes in, like you said, with the half page NCR form and he's filling out the estimate and like, here's the estimate to do your high rise building or even, you know, just do your storefront versus the guy with the, branded truck and the nice business card and the sales packet that has all the important information like the insurance, you know, showing all the accreditation, showing all the services, all in a really awesome, you know, presentation. That is, you're going to get that job over the other guy. Like it shows you the price is right. It shows you've been there, done that too. Nobody, I mean, every now and then you don't, you get somebody who doesn't care to kind of, yeah, it's your first time. Yeah, we'll try it, you know, cause they're going to save some money, but for a yeah. lot of guys and girls that are in the property management side, they want somebody they're going to trust. So hand him over. I always say this thing. If you, let's go the opposite side of nice. Say you went, you filled out your bid, you put it on a loose leaf paper and ripped it out of a spiral notebook and handed it to them. In your brain right now, everybody who's listening, you'd be like, well, that'd be horrible. They would never go with that. They would never like, okay, so that's the opposite. And your brain is already telling you that if you're so crappy, they're not going to hire you. And it has a huge impact on it. What if you were the other side? It's the same thing like custom cookies. People will bring like, you know, they'll be like, hey, I want to bid your properties, but here's a tray of cookies. They have all my logo on there or the bottom is printed with my logo or all these little things. It's just creating an impression that, you know, I am here to serve you and I want to do anything I can to make sure it happens. I mean, 
commercial packets to me, especially if you guys are bidding uh, commercial jobs, it's so stinking valuable. Uh, it's so worth it. And like you said, you're not handing them out at trade shows where people just get them and then throw them away. I mean, you're handing these out to jobs that are really potentially going to be closing. So I'm happy. It'd be like Steve sending me a, a job like, Hey, I got a, a $12,000 complex. Uh, would you give me $10 for that lead? I'd give you that just to know the name, you know, just to know an email. So to do that, to kind of blow you, your, your image and get that, get that touch, that real nice touch. It's worth it. You know, I was just thinking, um, and you, you can obviously go, you know, low end and high end too yeah. when it comes to like the commercial sales packet, like even something just like a folder with stacker cut flyers, like four or five flyers, you know, nice stagger cut meaning like the talk shows and let's say like our services or testimonials or, or whatever it is they, a lot of people do it a lot of different ways uh, I've, that I've seen um I was just thinking like you know how awesome would it be if you handed over like a, a commercial sales kit or something like that and it had like a small square of just beautifully clean clear glass with like an imprint on it, like your glass should look like this yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Just something to include in there that like, it just amps it up. It, it, it legitimizes your business. It shows that you care. It shows that you want it. It shows that you're looking to spend some money making sure that you come off professional. Like, and you know, especially if you're going after some business and they've used the other person who, you know, had the better price, but didn't seem professional and probably did like a, you know, eh, kind of job. And then you come along this real, like awesome business and you don't have to be a multi-million dollar company or, you know, have a ton of clients to give off the impression that you're a multi-million dollar company with tons of clients and everyone's using you because you're the best. Like you just have to look like you care. Yeah. Like you look like you're, I, I look like I'm proud of my company. I'm going to do everything for them that makes me proud of my company. So it translates so well. It's like buying like a, if you get a Ferrari, the owner's manual is wrapped in real leather. Like if you get a um, uh, expensive box of Cohiba cigars, the, the inlaid hardware is real gold. It's like that stuff that doesn't need to happen, but it's that type of thing that has to happen if people want to show somebody their value. I just ordered, um, I have my laptop that I travel with. I ordered this thing. It's basically an attachment of two additional monitors on a laptop. And because I can't work on just one monitor, especially yeah. when I'm traveling. And I ordered this uh, Trio Max from Mobile Pixels. And their branding, their box made me feel like it was an Apple product. Yeah. And right there, I am thinking quality. I'm thinking like this was worth my money um yep. before i even opened it because i'm like wow look how much they can and i'm not going to open the box and show you how it how it comes but like i spent a good amount of money on that and the packaging did the packaging alone made me feel like that was money well spent yeah put you the know? packages next to each other you got one that you could tell from china's in that weird plastic you know like floppy plastic thing you know one's in just a regular cardboard that's all faded and then you have that one you didn't even have to see the product. You know which product's going to be better. It's the same thing. We're selling a product. It just happens to be us. You know? And you know what? That product could be coming from that same factory in China. <laughs> but like, it's a mental thing. Marketing and, you know, print marketing, digital marketing, every type of marketing. It's all mental. It's all presentation. It, it's it's, it's we so, sell, so important. We sell an experience. Like, we're a luxury. What we do, if I wash your windows, it's because it's a luxury. You don't, your house doesn't burn down if I don't, you know, your commercial project doesn't burn down. People aren't going to be happy, but no one dies if I don't clean it. So it's, it has to be set that way. And, and the other thing is if you give somebody something like that, they're not necessarily focused on price. It's not a price thing anymore, you know, because they're not like apples to apples. It's apples to apples to this gold ring, you know, and people are like, oh, well, that's why, you know, they, they just get it that way. So if you're not doing commercial packets, do it. I'm telling you commercial packets are so get like, you know, a hundred of them at a time. You don't have to buy thousands of them like yeah. you're doing EDDM or anything like that, which brings us to the next one, which is EDDM. Yeah, the EDDM thing. Which uh, I know EDDM is probably your uh, biggest seller because, um, you know, when people do EDDM, they're doing like $10,000 pulls 
Uh, I mean, you know, a guy that uh, I know real well too, he's like every week or every two weeks, he's putting in 10,000 pieces, you know, in his EDDM and EDDM is awesome, but that itself is uh, like you said earlier, you either have time or money or money or time. Uh, you know, that is one of those, like, I'm so busy, but I have to keep this giant fed, right? The bigger a monster is like hippos eat a lot of food compared to a hamster. You have to get a lot more food for that hippo to keep them big. Same thing with business. The bigger you get, the more you have to bring in to keep them fed. And that's where EDDM really comes in. Mm. You know how I feel about EDDM. I, I, lo I, I love EDDM. Um, it, it works for the majority of businesses. Once again, going back to- If like, it's done right. If it's if, done right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Um, and I wish people- would educate themselves a little more before jumping in and, you know, writing a check for $10,000 in postage or, or even a thousand dollars in postage. Yeah. Um, because you really can do it wrong if you're not careful and it just takes a little bit doing a little bit of homework, like, um, you know, shameless plug. I know windowcleaner.com. There's a marketing blueprint book, um, written by Chris Lambernides where he goes over like EDDM strategies and, and stuff like that. And really just how to do simple homework to make sure that you are, you know, maximizing your ROI or at least attempting to maximize yeah. your ROI. Um, I had like the worst thing ever speaking on that is this guy was like, dude, it's, this is like two years ago, maybe even three, but things were so bad. He's like, dude, I got no money left, man. I, I just, I took a big gamble and I'm hoping it pays off and we're talking and I'm like, Oh man, well, hopefully, you know, what did you do? And he's like, ah, oh, dude, I had literally like $3,500 in my bank account. I had took all of that out. I bought an EDM, EDDM thing. I got like, you know, $117 left in my bank account to eat. This has got to work. And I'm like, okay, well, let me kind of go over how we do this. You know, but he's like, don't even worry about it. I sent them all out. So he took every dollar he made, bought, $3,500 in um, postage and in uh, pieces and sent all of them out to different people all at one time. And I never heard from him again. He did it wrong. He spent all of his money and he could have done that same $3,500 right. And he would have had like a, a better ROI. He also did it in the middle of winter because he was, he was dead broke at that time. Um, but uh, you have to do it right. You have to be smart on it. It's, it's just one of those things. Oof. That, that pains me to hear. And, and I'm sure he like shotgunned an area and just like sent one postcard out to like a blanket area for that month. One, one click of his mouse sent every dollar he had and just hoped that it would take in January. Uh, well, would I possibly convince somebody to not use that their last $3,500 on EBDM? I'd probably convince them and, and explain to them some other ways in print to, you know, really extend that, that money uh, as far as it can go. Yeah. Uh, but if you were to say, I'm using this on ADDM, that's it. You don't shotgun one area one time. It would, that guy would have been better off breaking that up, ordering, you can order the same piece and, you know, order, order enough that you can hit the same home three times versus three homes one time. And that's the golden rule that people need to understand. How many times have you gotten something in the mail? And as you're sifting through the mail, you know, all right, bill, bill, crap, bill, oh, what's this invitation, bill, crap. Like you sift through the mail, it, 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 it all depends on the time of day you're looking at the mail, it depends on the time of the week. You need to hit somebody multiple times. Going back yeah. to the touches thing, you need to touch them multiple times. There's been so many times where I've gotten the same thing. For instance, my dentist. I, I go to a new dentist because of an EDDM piece. It took me getting that piece like four or five times before I finally called this new dentist. But every other time, I threw it away. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I was in the right frame of mind. And I actually happened to have passed them numerous times when I was going to and from the office. But it was those multiple touches that finally made me made me call them and make an appointment and leave my my current dentist at the time. I feel really bad that that guy did that, and hopefully he's doing okay. But that's not the way to do it. Yeah, you need to you need to go on the USPS. You need to type in your address or the address in the area that you're looking to get business from because 
towns are broken up into carrier routes and there's, you know, one town could have high end version, a medium end, the low end, that's just apartments where nobody's going to call you anyway. It's pointless to spend money to descend to those places. Yeah. You get 10, 15 minutes and you can find the best areas to send out your EDD MPs and hopefully nail, you know, a few customers that are going to spend the money, you know, that you're looking to make. You know, they're going to spend the money that you're looking to charge. It's all about ROI. Like it, everything is. But when you really think, especially mail, it's like, what do they say? Five to seven touches before somebody pays attention. Like you yeah. see thousands of ads all day. Your brain doesn't even register that they're ads until you see something enough times it becomes familiar. When you see a face you think is familiar, you stop and double look because your brain is like, hey, I know that. Like it's, it's the same thing with pieces. Sending out the same piece a bunch of times is... It's, it's really the way to go. I know you're busy and I want to talk about one more thing with you. My all-time favorite residential things, which is window clings. Mm. So if you guys don't know about window clings again, listen to my podcast. What are you doing? Uh, no, but window clings are basically like the little oil change stickers. It has your logo. It says your last window cleaning was done and it's got your phone number. And when you should sign up the whole thing, you put it in the kitchen window when you're cleaning, you're already there. It's a window cling. So no one has ever complained in all of the years I've done these. But what it is, is that every time somebody's doing something or they're looking, they're going to catch that in the window because they're not used to seeing something in the window. Oh, man, I, it's been that long since I got my windows done. Oh, man, I got to call them. Their phone number's right there. It makes it in their brain, and it also lets them call it. Uh, and you guys do window clings. Tell me about that. Is that something that makes sense to you? Well, before I go on about this, this is the first time that we're talking about all these print things you're doing, and I want to know why uh, you have been calling me personally about this stuff. I know you got to. That's true. Friend, you probably got a friend or something, but you're doing everything right. So keep, like, keep in yeah. mind, I have not owned a business in four years technically, but I've been out of it. I sold black like last September. So when I say I'm doing these things, oh, it's a force okay. of habit, but that's with my company that I no longer have. Yeah. Cause we used to work together. And then I just figured, I know you're doing this thing and you've talked about your business. And I figured that like, Oh, you know, maybe he's got a friend or something. I would, but I would I never buy from anybody, but Steve, I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't. Well, you know, I want you to go wherever is going to give you the best bang for your buck, but also quality. Um, yeah. And that, that's, that's a big, important thing. Quality, quality, especially in this industry. Window clings are they're super inexpensive. And as long as you do the static clings uh, that you can easily remove and ask, you know, some people like to ask. We have some customers who order them and the, they'll ask the homeowner, like, hey, can I put this up? Um, but even if you don't ask, make sure it's easily removable. Because you don't want to piss someone off. You don't want to put right. a high tech sticker on their, on their, you know, even if it's like over in the corner, you don't want to put that on someone's window and then have them be pissed off when they're trying to peel it off. And then they have to clean the window that you just cleaned. That's when they're they calling do. you back to remove yeah. your own sticker. Yeah. But that, that's just like, there are so many things that you can do that don't cost a lot of money to add value or act as lead generators or, you know, you keep you fresh in a customer's mind. And that's absolutely one of them. Um, you just threw a curveball at me. I, I, I'm always talking about EDDM and postcards and door hangers and stuff like that. But, you know, that is something that just always works. It's a great, it's a great low cost um, option for just continuing to market your business. And once again, it's, you know, that's a little outside of the touches because usually you're putting it you know, when, when I think of touches, I think of like how to, how to gain yeah. customers, but that's like customer retention that that's, that's keeping them thinking about you. There are so many times where like, you like to think that when you do a service for somebody, they're always going to call you for it, but that's not the case. We know that sometimes someone else will come by and, you know, if you're out of sight, out of mind, and they'll make an offer or whatever it is. And before you know it, they're using somebody else, but that's just like a really nice way to subliminally constantly keep your company in their mind uh, yeah, subliminal it, messaging people are always so concerned about getting new customers when they forget that they've had if they're really in business for a year they've had a year's worth of customers oh well i gotta get more customer well, what about all those ones you know window cleaning is a reoccurring thing windows get dirty so keeping care of your customers and keeping your like name fresh again anybody that's two years old or older in the united states every single person Rich, poor, it doesn't matter, knows what McDonald's is. But yet they still advertise in every single area and it's to keep relevant. It's to keep in front of people's brains. And as much as you work, 
on making your brand awesome and your logo. Oh, I love my color. My colors are red, man. I only have red stuff because that's all of that. Guess what? They will forget your name as soon as you leave. I'm telling you, you know, they have to then find something with your name. No one of your customers, I'm pretty sure. By the way, comment down below if you have a different uh, idea, but not one of your customers memorizes your number. They have to find you under something. And I'm telling you, if you're in their phone, it's going to be something, something window cleaning because they're not going to remember your name, but they're going to remember what you do. Or they have to see something or they saved a postcard or they saved a magnet or they saved your business card or they saved your flyer in order to call you because they don't remember who you are. It's our job to remind them. Window cleaning, I always tell people, I told them, sorry, but I always say window cleaning is my job. You know, you have the rest of your life to live. So that's my job to remind you when window cleaning is coming up. It's to remind you to get on the schedule. It's to double check to make sure everything looked good with window cleaning. Like window cleaning is my life. It's not yours. That's how you should just kind of have the mindset to contact these people you've already done. They've already trusted you. And that's the hardest part about business is getting somebody used to wanting to fork over money. They have to trust you. You made two amazing points that I wanted to... I'm not trying to soup you up there, but you really did make two two great points. And I no, want to you can always tell me how awesome I am. Just go ahead. And- I love you, man. I'm I'm I miss seeing you in person. We got to get together. Um, <laughs> All right. There's a company that I that I know, and I'm not going to give the name. They sell garage doors, um, commercial and residential, and their name is absolutely atrocious. But the owner just does not want to change it. All right, their name is atrocious. Their domain name for their website is atrocious. Um, it's just bad. And they're having an issue literally where like people don't remember the company um, and they don't know what to search for and they don't really know the guy's name. So like you said, if they don't have like a phone number saved and they can like find it by like, oh, I thought his name was that. Or even if they do know his name, like they can find it. If they have it saved in their phone, they're not going to remember this name in order to Google it and get that contact information in case they want to refer or in case they need something else in the future. And then it's just like, what was that company again? And that goes back to what you were saying. Like you need to have little leave behinds so people know how they can get in touch with your business moving forward. You know, whether it's a window cling or whether it's, you know, um, you're still sending them postcards or doing, you know, Facebook advertising and stuff like that. You have to constantly be in front of them. They're not going to remember you. Was that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say the second thing that I I wanted to bring up because I think it's so important for people to talk about um, their failures and, and how they grew from them. My first business printing company, um, we had upwards of a thousand customers, a lot of customers. And the biggest thing I could safely say that I did wrong with that company is the fact that we did not spend time um, nurturing our existing customer base. We were always going for the new customers. And the reason why people weren't coming back to us wasn't because we didn't do a good job or wasn't because we didn't have amazing customer service. There's thousands of print companies that have amazing customer service and do a really good job. And they happen to be marketing to my customers, you know, and I'm not doing anything to like stay in front of them. So the next time that business card deal came from that new company or, or this person offered this or did whatever, they jump ship and they went, it's nothing personal. It's just, they're going to who's in front of them and who's Mm going to give them what they want at a, at a fair price. And that was the single biggest mistake I made back then was not nurturing the existing customer base staying in front of them, continuing to market to them, giving them gift cards, having somebody pick up the phone every once in a while and reach out to them. You know, if you do window cleaning for someone, you know, and you haven't heard from them in a year, well, it's time for them to like get your services, you know, get that done. So checking in with them somehow is better than just saying, oh, well, you know, they were really happy the first time they left us a Google review. They clearly like us. If they need us, they're going to call us again. Yeah. That's not the case. That is not the case. No one, no one goes and plants a garden. And then as soon as it's all on the ground, they go, okay, let's go get some more seeds. Let's go get some more seeds there. You have to focus on what you're doing and what you have before you focus on other stuff. So I completely agree in that. And how many times, cause everybody, we live in our own little bubbles. So we all think that everything we're doing, of course, is the greatest. And a lot of us, you should be proud of that. But we forget that some things that are happening, 
to us are happening to other people. So how many times has somebody called? I get all the time, even with WCR, people go like, oh, I ordered from you like 10 times. I don't see your name or number. No, oh, and I just put an order in like a month ago. No, I don't see. Well, we'll pull it up and I pull it. I can't, I don't have it. Oh, I was talking to Danny. We don't have a Danny here. Oh, that was XYZ company. Well, since I got you on the phone, let's put the order. And it's like, people forget who you are, but yeah. yet we were in front of somebody at some time, which they thought, oh, that's who I used. Like how many times in window cleaning have you gotten a call and been like, oh, we had you guys come out last year. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I can't find that we did you. Oh, no, you guys came out. You have the, the big van. No, that wasn't us. That must have been another company, but I'd love to give you a quote. Oh, sure. Let's. They just know it's window cleaning, but they don't necessarily remember you. So staying in front of people keeps that thing fresh. It keeps that people so that you're the one now that they call and they think that you were somebody else because other people are getting your calls thinking that they were you. It's that same thing with a name. If your name is Shimorphin Glorp or something and people are, it's not memorable, people aren't going to go through the thing and be like, what was that name again? I think it was like Schwarm. It was something. I can't, they're not going to be able to search it. There are no phone books where you see listings. You know, it's just one of those things that you have to keep reminding people who you are. Sending postcards, emails, whatever, and just being like, hey, remember me? That's so that when people come to that time where it's in their brain, they're going to call you. I, I, have, I, have, I have to mention um, my girlfriend, Christina, who is eventually going to be my wife. Talking about his girlfriend again, the cat guy. <clears throat> she's eventually going to be my wife. I met her through her mother who used my services many years ago and accidentally contacted me instead of the other print company. So literally I met this woman, she meant to hit up another print company, had seen that I was in the same general area and called me on accident and we got to talking. I converted her into a customer. Years later, met her daughter. Now we're dating and eventually gonna get married. And like, that was all because of just, you know, calling the wrong company, but I was there, I was present. I had, you know, I don't wanna, I, I had marketed to her actually, you know. So, on, so what on, you're on, telling me and everybody listening can write this down as you're promising that if you market yourself, you'll find a wife. Exactly. Wow. Exa that is that's, exactly, nice. that's a Steve guarantee. Exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, so real quick, um, what would you say was your, your most profitable print marketing uh, that you did when you had the business. If you, if you could, so, the five things we talked about, if you could have chosen one of them um, and only done that one, which yeah. is never a good idea, but only, you know, for a conversation, what would it have been? Man. So what's really hard about that is that there's different ways to touch different people. Route is different than commercials, different than window, like residential. Mm -hmm. But I got to say that EDDM is hitting so many more people than the others, but Commercial packets made me more money. Window clings returned me more people than ever. So that whole sprinkle thing we talked about where you like have to be everywhere and do everything. I think they all have their place, but man, it, that's a good question. There, there, I can't see there one being the other because it all helps towards the, the bigger goal, but man. And, and what you just said is so important because, you know, I see so often these companies or the, you know, the, these these guys or gals who have been doing it for a long time and they're like, oh, I know the best marketing strategy because I've always been doing it this way and it makes me a lot of money and it does this way. You don't understand. It, you have to at least do a little bit of everything because you never know what you're going to pull in from the yeah. other marketing vehicle. And just because you might be seeing a decent ROI here doesn't mean you, you won't necessarily see an even better ROI on something else. Yeah. You know, to be honest, some people do better with digital marketing than print marketing, but it all depends on demographics, locations, what they're selling, what kind of services they're selling. There's a place for everything. And that same company that does better digital might do a decent ROI through print. And they might, you know, think, oh, they, I've been doing this forever. I'm making great money here. But that doesn't mean that it's the best marketing vehicle. Yeah. And just multi-touching you know, touching someone with, uh, did we talk about lawn signs? The which one? Lawn signs. We didn't, we didn't touch. Oh, about we lawn did oh dude, lawn signs, uh, real quick, lawn signs. Like, hey, were you doing lawn signs in your business? Uh, I didn't because of uh, the city I lived in did not allow that. That's a big thing. Yes. Yeah. The but, city uh, I live in now, apparently 
they must give grants if you put yard signs because they're everywhere. Well, and, and like, let's say you do a job and you do the five rounds. All right. And we'll, I don't remember the names. I think Margie was the one who got the windows clean and like Janice was the one who didn't get yeah. them, but she got the, the door hanger. And now Janice is driving down the road and she sees a yard sign with the same branding. And that's so important. The same branding, all your stuff needs to look similar so that like in the brain, it automatically knows like, you know what McDonald's looks like, you know what Apple looks like, you know what Google looks like. It's branding is so important. You don't want your truck to look different than your business card and your lawn sign and door hanger. So yeah. like Janice is driving down the road and then she sees a lawn sign. You just touched her again. She got the door hanger. She's got the neighbor across the street that's got beautiful windows. She just saw the lawn sign, possibly like a Facebook ad targeted. And then she gets a postcard in the mail. You're everywhere. And finally you've touched her all over the place. And she's like, damn, I got to call these people. Like Jerry, you're not cleaning the windows. I'm calling this company now. Yeah. Like, um, all because you touched Janice. I'm just all saying. It's, Janice. I'm sorry. It makes sense. I it, it the one thing that we didn't touch on too. Uh, I know this podcast has gone more than your normal. If you're still listening, it, though, that how, how long is it? We normally do half an hour. We're on like we're going on like 50 minutes. Oh God, I'm sorry. No, oh. no, it's a good one. It's a good one. If you're still listening, though, listen to this. If you do different marketing on each place, that whole touch, remember five to seven times, somebody has to see something before they register it. If you do the exact same image. So when we did design, we would make one design. We'd split test it a thousand different ways, right? When we came up with the design, it would be about a year later. And we would take that design and we would make it really big. So it was like a full eight and a half by 12 sheet of the design. And then from that, we would cut sizes for everything else if i need a postcard i'm going to cut the sizes four by six if i'm doing hand you know mail version if i'm doing eddm it's a different size but i'm taking it all out of that same exact thing and i'm telling you your brain will register it as the exact same thing even if it's in a yard sign even if it's an eddm even if it's in the cover of a flyer or postcard or it, they will know that it's the exact same thing it's the same feel same image same everything and that's how all of a sudden you can send seven different things from a postcard to, you know, uh, maybe it's a uh, Facebook ads to it's uh, you know, a flyer and a door hanger. You can send all these different things, but if it's the same image, it's seven touches and now they remember it. And for me, like I'm the kind of person and not everyone is like me, but if I were to step out and I'm just someone who is in need of services, I very much judge a company by their cover, judge a book by its cover. I, if, if I'm seeing a company or a brand all over the place, mentally, I'm thinking, and then, once again, this is me and not everyone, but a lot of people are like me. I'm thinking this is a legitimate company. I like working with legitimate yeah. companies. I would not want, I would not hire, you know, and I hate to say this, like I've had bad experiences in the past with plumbers. Like I don't want to hire Joe the plumber who, you know, just has his little plumbing thing and gets his business cards from Office Depot. And then he goes and does a shoddy job that looks awful or like leaks or, or whatever it is. I've had a multitude of issues with plumbers in the past. I work with the company where I know that like, I see them all over the place. They clearly have business. They're clearly making money. Um, I'm, I correlate that with, they're going to do a good job for me. So like, you know, the, it's all a mind game. Marketing is all a mind game. And you don't want to seem, you know, for some people, you don't want to seem too big. People like working with small businesses. So you don't want to necessarily try to be McDonald's or, yeah. or Apple or Google, but you also don't want to be, you know, I, I, you guys talk about the bucket bobs, is it? Bucket bobs. Is That's it? right. That's right. You, you also don't want to be that. You, yeah. you want to be somewhere in between. You want to find a happy medium. You want to be a local uh, local brand, family brand always works better and you know, that, that whole thing, but you also want to seem established. You don't want to seem like you just started doing this, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's just how I think. And, and that's how I judge companies, you know, that I'm going to work with for, for my own personal uses. Like I very much judge them based on, based on presentation, appearance. Can I get, can I go and see a ton of reviews for them? You know? So yeah. yeah, it makes sense. It's just it, everything makes sense when you look at it outside of when it's your own business. If it's your own business, this is all you do, you yeah. know. So if you guys aren't doing uh, multi-touch marketing like this, it's 
do it. I'm telling you, do it, do it, do it. Now's the time to get the stuff ready. Um, if you are listening or watching and you want to talk about either cats or uh, sleeve tattoos or finding girlfriends by accident by servicing their mom, give Steve a call <laughs> and Steve, tell us how people can contact you. Tell us your info. Oh, man. Um, I'm never going to live the cat thing down. Oh. <laughs> you, the Lamborghinis brothers, everybody, everybody. I'm going to kill them. So anyway, um, the window cleaner printing department, uh, we are humming. We are awesome. Uh, everyone is using us. We actually, you know, surprisingly, even with coronavirus uh, this month, which is it's the last day of the month, this month, March 2021, shattered every previous month in the history of the window cleaner printing department, wow. even pre rona So that's like, that's super awesome. I'm really yeah. excited about that. That's no BS, like it just shattered. So um, you could reach us on windowcleaner.com forward slash printing. Uh, Jillian is very prominent in places like Pro Window Cleaning on Facebook. Uh, she is the customer service extraordinaire. People tend to want to talk to her more, more so than me because she's just really awesome at what she does. Uh, you can email us printing at windowcleaningresource.com. You can call us and I don't have it pulled up, sir. Uh, you can call us at something. Um, On the you phone, call. You, can, you can call. You can actually call our main line and we'll patch you over. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 862-312-2010. Um, and that's the thing, like the windowcleaner.com printing department was established not to be a necessarily for-profit business. It's really to help the growth of the windowcleaner.com customer base. Uh, so we love just chatting about strategies. We'll, we'll tell people if digital marketing, you know, if they should invest some of their money and stuff that we don't do, just because it's all about helping to grow the companies. It's not about making a quick buck because ultimately when companies grow, they tend to spend more money. I'm sure if you help, Josh, if you help people grow their business and you point them in the right direction and, and advise them on the proper tools to use and they start growing, call you more you know yeah. it's just that's just how it works so um we're really uh, a very powerful resource for brands and, and companies especially you know startup businesses who are looking to figure out like all right i've got thirty five hundred dollars steve should i just blanket an entire area with bbdm no <laughs> no <laughs> yeah yeah here's what you can do you can get some door hangers you can get some business cards you can get some flyers. Is there an area that you want to gain some business in? Well, maybe we can do a very small test run of EDDM there and see if you get anything from that. So that's what the, the windowcleaner.com printing department really does. Nice. Our name is Window Cleaning Resource because we truly do want to be a resource. So if you got printing questions or anything or just want to talk to Steve, Jillian's awesome, but that whole department, you guys are really, really rad. Um, if for some reason you need to get supplies ordered, well, my shameless plug, and I would love to be your resource and your guy, give me a call direct, 862-312-2026. Would love, love, love to help you out. Uh, make sure to get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine because you're that awesome, and I would love to have you as a uh, subscriber. But more importantly, go out there and touch as many people as you can, and more importantly, go out there and be epic. 